Hello, good morning, and welcome to Church at Home. It is so wonderful to have you with us this morning. Later on, Kavan is going to be leading us in our series in Mark, and we're thinking about Jesus Remembered. But first, we have put together a little video to give you an idea of what goes on behind the scenes to put together Church at Home. Hi everyone. Have you ever wondered how all these church at homes that we've been making are put together, how they're all made, how all the different elements all come together? Well, we thought we'd show you behind the scenes. Stage one, planning. There is lots of planning that goes into church at home, from meetings to talk about ideas and content, to the readers and prayers being sent information by Penny. The preachers are prayerfully planning what they will say, and the musicians are prayerfully planning the songs to sing and play. And that is all before we have even recorded anything. Stage two, recording. Here is James, Charlotte and Caroline to talk to us about how they record themselves for Church at Home. Well, hello and uh, welcome to where I tend to do most of my filming uh, during the week for church at home. We've got it all set up here so we can get it videoed and of course you'll notice the lighting. That was one of the first things I discovered about filming because of these. These glasses, they're always reflecting the light. So um, I'd be sitting in my kitchen and then realised the light was flooding in through the window and it would all be reflecting off my glasses and it's not very easy to move a window. Um, so you close the, the blinds <laughs> and then discover it's too dark. And so it took a lot of time, but these are brilliant to help me get the lighting right. Um, now, what else? The, the other bit of fun I've had is with sound. So there are various microphones. Um, here is uh, one, sometimes you use the clip mic, I use other microphones. Sometimes it's a bit echoey, maybe a bit like now. Um, but sometimes when I'm using this microphone, it's brilliant. And I record a section. And then I watch it back and I find there was a loose connection somewhere in one of the wires and crackling away and I have to do the whole section again. I've been back here some evenings to, to re-record sections. You know, it's, it's been a huge learning curve. We've had lots of fun, but you know, you do it. The service of God and I'm thankful for what we have been able to do. I'm here to talk you through what is behind the scenes when we lead. Now, for me, uh, I use my iPad, which is here, <laughs> uh, to lead. And I've got a bit of lighting going on. And I also have some notes uh, to help me figure out what I'm going to say. Um, but I do it in different takes. Um, and yeah, I film on the iPad. Then I usually edit it a little bit before it goes uh, to the main editor uh, for Church at Home. So this would be, I find a nice spot with a nice well-lit uh, background. And then yeah, set my iPad up. Uh, it's actually on two stands today because I was standing up. Sometimes I do sit down. Um, but that's it really, the iPad, some lighting and a smile. So that's what goes into leading when I'm leading. There you go. For those of us who've been Doing church online, it's been a big learning curve. It's taken us a while to get used to recording. There are certain things that you have to consider. You have to have good lighting. You have to try and avoid backgrounds like windows behind you because there's a bit of a glare when people are looking at it. We try and get the sound quality to be reasonable and we try and tidy up a bit you can probably see the iron in the background there. I'm going to have to take that down. Stage three, editing. Mm -hmm. 
Julia and Jan and Kevin Kim all record and mix their music in different ways. But here is Dave to tell us how he records and mixes the music we do. Hi everybody. Um, this is where it all happens. Um, where Sean and I do all the recording for um, the songs for Church at Home. So it's recorded on a package called Logic, which is um, a multi-track uh, recording package. This is um, Cornerstone, which is what we've uh, what we've used this Sunday. Um, so down here are all the different tracks that we've recorded. So normally we start off by laying down a, a, a drum track um, and then Sean and I normally do a rough uh, vocals on a piano. Um, so we've got vocals here and where's the piano? Piano there. So if I play that then you can hear both of those together. And then we've got um, we've got bass um, strings, so I can add all these in as well. Um, if I take the solo off. So this is the bass track. Piano track. And then further along we've got some uh, some strings coming in. And some guitar. So that's basically how we do it. We record each track individually and then put them all together. Um, and then we've obviously got, uh, we've got a mixer section as well, which we can, we can mix things. Um, we've got all the volumes, we've got the pans to send them left or right. Um, we've got all sorts of um, effects. We've got reverb and delay and, and, and all sorts of things on there. Big box of tricks. And then, um, and then hopefully at the end of the day we uh, we mix it and and um, it sounds okay. So if I wanted to add another track to this now, then I would just select another track. If I select a software instrument, if I choose an instrument in here, um, and then it comes up with another track here, um, and then you just play it in. You go back to the beginning. Um, press record and then um, and then play away and then it records what you've just played so that, that's uh, that's basically how we how we record everything and then obviously Sean sings through the the microphone which again goes into the into the computer um, so yeah that's what we do Kev is now going to run through editing songs. Hello and welcome to a sneak peek behind the scenes of editing some of the music that we get to enjoy at church at home. Okay, so here we go. Thankfully, I'm blessed with two screens, which makes it all a little bit easier and a little bit more of a speedy process than it might normally uh, B. So on the big monitor here is where I have my editing software and on the smaller monitor on the right side is where I have uh, all the tabs that I need for uh, the slides that I edit. I use a website called Canva. One of the most important things is the CCLI uh, web page, uh, which is where the, um, the words are, words can be found, but also one of the most important things is the uh, the license number and all that sort of stuff to make sure that we uh, got the right copyright protection and all that sort of thing. Um, so that's what kind of goes on on this screen is, is where all the slides are, are edited together. And as you can see, there's a sneak peek of a song 
that is going to be coming up. Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, and then on the big, big old monitor here is where the actual editing happens. Um, it's it's fairly um, straightforward sometimes. Other times it's a little bit more complicated. If some of the songs need to need to be kind of uh, edited with their levels or whatever it may be. Um, but um, for this software, I've kind of got gotten used to how it works now. So I kind of just queue up the the song and that comes up as a track down the bottom here. Uh, and then it's a simple process of listening to the song um, and adding in the necessary slides um, to, to correlate with the words. Um, the track gets edited down, down the bottom here and then it'll appear here for me and I can press play and uh, it will start playing down here. And then you'll notice it will go black here because there's not another screen up. And then it's just a, a process of lining up the, the the images with the words to make sure that they're in the right place and make sure there's some smooth transitions between what is coming next so it's not too jarring for when we're watching at home. So I hope that, I hope that gives you a little idea of what goes into the editing um, for Church at Home in terms of the videos and the music. Um, and to be completely honest with you, it is, uh, it's, it's a joy to be able to put the time in to put this together um, because you will get to enjoy it when we watch Church at Home together on a Sunday and that makes it um, that makes it really worth it. So thank you all for your kind words for all the music and all that sort of stuff um, and yeah I hope this has been insightful for you. The main edit is where it all comes together so Paul Morgan, Paul Mason and myself all share um, the editing each week for Church at Home. Um, and we do it on a package like this that you can see here. Uh, it can take about a day, maybe two days to put an edit together, just depending on what the content is and how much videos and how much editing there, there is involved. So I've pretty much done the edit for this week for Church at Home. Here are all the videos. So we've got um, a song, we've got Kev's intro at the beginning, uh, we've got Kevin's talk, we have the reading, we need to put the words on, um, some more songs, um, the prayers. So you can see how many videos that we need to put together and just make sure everything flows. Uh, and then uh, somebody checks it, gets uploaded to YouTube, and you're able to watch it on a Sunday morning. So that is how Church at Home is put together. We really hope you've enjoyed seeing behind the scenes for Church at Home. Well, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Holy Trinity's Church at Home. Okay. I, I look forward to jostling with people in and out of small shop entrances or people knocking into me. Let's stop now. So how's it going, Carol, the filming? It's fine. <laughs> going to look forward to. Yeah? yeah? I look forward to crowds. Okay, that was it. I'm trying to do a video right now and there's an aeroplane going past, so another take. How many takes is it going to take me? I haven't even got through my whole script. Yeah, right. It's gone downhill. I had it. I had it for a mere second. Now it has gone, 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 gone. My brain is not working anymore. Hi everyone. We hope you're keeping well and safe. Um... <coughs> Hi everyone. This morning we're going to sing Christ Be Our Light. And although we can't be in our church building together, I see I've already done it wrong. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi everyone.
Hi, church family. It's great to be worshipping Erla uh, with you. Do, well, let's just do it again. Oh, okay. Hi, Hi everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Thanks very much, Caroline. Um, so we can reflect on what God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We hope that's given you a better idea of what happens behind the scenes at Church at Home and all the effort that goes into putting these together. Now it's time for us to worship the Lord as we sing Great is Thy Faithful. Before we come to our reading and our talk, let me just pray for us. Father God, thank you that great is your faithfulness. Thank you that you give us strength to face the day. Thank you that you give us hope for tomorrow. And Father, I pray that you would quiet our hearts and our minds this morning as we look 
to learn more about you. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's reading is Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. The Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. Disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me? It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. Quite a few people have said that lockdown three is a bit like an extended Lent. We've been in a time of lamentation for a year now. Hard times. Time to reflect and rethink our priorities. Time to discover the importance of friendships, of family. Partly because we are deprived of so much contact with them. Partly because we've chosen to make the effort to make contact in new ways with the special ones. We now know who is special and what really matters. That's good preparation for lifelong living. As we follow Jesus on the road to his ultimate destiny, we see him increasingly focused on what's really important to him too. He knows his time left here on earth is so short. So he's preparing his disciples for what is to come. He shares his heart so that they may gain some insight into the implications of their journey to Jerusalem. He's already given them some clues and a fairly clear indication that Jerusalem will be the place where he will come into direct conflict with the Jewish leaders. They should have caught on that he knew he would be going to his death, but they still had so much to learn. As Jesus prepares for his final conflict, he chooses to spend time with his special twelve and their few immediate supporters, doing the traditional things but giving them new meaning as they share together the week of the festival. Let's look in detail at what today's reading uh, says. So verse 13, he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. 
Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. So Jesus refers to himself as rabbi or teacher. And he specifically refers to the twelve as his disciples. Well, there had been many rabbis in Jerusalem preparing for the feast. Passover was an important festival, with all the traditions handed down from Moses and revived since the return from around the exile in 450 BC or thereabouts. These festivals and the temple rituals became central to the life of God's people, marking them out as distinct and separate from their Roman occupiers, and different from all the Gentiles who thronged that cosmopolitan city, the centre of trade for that area. It would be no surprise that a rabbi needed a room to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. This surely wasn't the only such gathering. As we reflect on this under the restrictive rules of lockdown, we realise that Jesus couldn't have shared that last supper with his disciples under the rules that we're living under. Meeting, to talk, to learn together, to share food and fellowship is vital to living and growing as humans made in the image of God. We are social beings. As God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a companionship of mutual support and understanding, one God in three persons, we too are made for socialising. I'm so thankful for the small groups that I belong to. Think of what lockdown would have been like without Zoom, without WhatsApp, without YouTube, and all the social media that the Church has discovered as essential for our thriving as God's people in these times. We still can't meet in the flesh, nor can we eat together, not even when we gather in groups indoors like Jesus and his disciples would do at Passover. Every Thursday in Lent, I'm meeting by Zoom with our home group. This week we welcome two new members, and they're so pleased to be with us, even if it's only on Zoom. They've missed out on group pairing. Bible study and worship and sharing and laughter with brothers and sisters in Christ for months. What a joy it is when we gather together in unity of spirit. The Holy Spirit is not bound by the restrictions of lockdown. He is with us when we share fellowship on Zoom. It's always Jesus' desire to share fellowship with his disciples, and he still does that today when we gather in his name, even if it's on YouTube Premier with live chat. The Father is calling back into the fold of his family. Yes, today, to celebrate together the love that has redeemed us. And of course, that is what the Last Supper is about. Jesus needed to share it with his chosen disciples. So, verse 13, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the city and a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where's my guest room, where I eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. I don't know why Jesus didn't give his disciples the address to go to, but a man carrying a water jar is very unusual. That was women's work. Anyway, they found the right place and the upper room that became so important in John's Gospel as the place of the foot washing and the upper room discourse about the vine and the branches, the work of the Holy Spirit and the love of God. You can get some of that by going back to my sermon on the vine on YouTube, Holy Trinity Nailsea, videos, then find the vine in Church at Home, Sunday the 14th of June 2020. But in Mark that's all skipped over. We just get the action of the Last Supper, focusing on Jesus' announcement of his imminent betrayal by one of the twelve, and then the thanks for and the distribution of the bread as his body and the cup of wine as the blood of the new covenant. 
What strikes me is that Jesus was in total control. It was all planned, all prearranged, all foreseen, and all very purposive, as a teaching seminar for the Twelve. They needed to know that Jesus knew what was going on, that there were no surprises for him. He had prepared beforehand for what was to happen to him, and to him it all made sense. But for the disciples it was a puzzle. It was confusing and overwhelming. It needed unpacking and explaining. But understanding had to come later, after the resurrection. Only then did it begin to make sense for them. What could they discern from the statement, This is my body? Taking a piece of bread. Or this is my blood? Holding up a glass of wine. And what is the new covenant? They knew about the covenant that God had made with Israel. They were God's people and he was their God. He had given them the law and the sacrificial system so that they could keep everything in balance between God and his people. By obedient faith. But a new covenant and a new kingdom? What did he mean? He was giving them confidence to know that even if they didn't understand, he did. He knew what was going to happen. He would have to be rejected, condemned by a Jewish court, sentenced to death by a Roman governor, be scourged and crucified, die as a criminal on a cross and be buried in a rich man's tomb. This ordeal was his way to the new kingdom. His journey through death to resurrection was the ultimate redeeming work of God to right the wrongs of every generation through the blood of the Lamb as the King of Israel. The Lion of Judah was slain only to rise again as the glorious Saviour of the world. But as yet they didn't know it. Only Jesus knew. That's always the case. We don't understand what's going on in the world. Why there is such a Covid awful mess? And why the rulers of the nations do what they do? Why are we closed for public worship? What's going on? Only God the Father knows the end from the beginning. Only Jesus understands that through the trials and temptations comes the final victory. All we have to do, like those first disciples, is trust him that he knows what's happening and he will redeem us from it. He's in the lead, just trust him and then be amazed. The way to the cross is the only way to the victory of Easter. And when Jesus had finished sharing the Last Supper with his disciples, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. That's the end of our reading for today. What was that hymn? The hymn they sang was probably Psalm 136. Let's just hear a bit of that now. So Psalm 136, it's about redemption. It's about the Passover. And uh, it begins with uh, reminding us of what God has done, how good he is and that his love endures forever. So between each half verse we say his love endures forever. Do join in. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, 
His love endures forever and brought Israel out from among them. His love endures forever with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. His love endures forever to him who divided the Red Sea asunder. His love endures forever and brought Israel through the midst of it. His love endures forever, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Zion, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. Inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. And so Jesus went out with his disciples to the Mount of Olives with that refrain ringing in his ears. His love endures forever. On his way to defeat Satan on the cross and to win the final victory for us.
with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Singing. 
Hi everyone, in our prayers this morning we shall be picking up some of the themes which Kevin has shared with us. So our prayers today will be in very short sentences. We shall say them and then we will repeat them, inviting you at home to join us in speaking them out. So let us pray together. During this period of lockdown, we spent much time in our homes. Let us invite Jesus to be with us, bringing us comfort, protecting our families and friends, and guiding our thoughts and actions. May I walk with Jesus each day. Amen. May, May I walk, walk with, with Jesus, Jesus each day. day. Amen. We're thankful for all those who have given us so much during the pandemic, to nurses and doctors, vaccinators, carers, those who supply our physical needs and those who encourage and support us. Strengthen and sustain all doctors and nurses. Amen. Strengthen, Strengthen and, and sustain, sustain all, all doctors, doctors and, and nurses. nurses. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for our church family, particularly for those who lead our fellowship and continue to organise and run services, small groups and activities for both young and old. Continue to inspire, guide and strengthen our leaders. Continue, Continue to, to inspire, inspire, guide and, and strengthen, strengthen our, our leaders. leaders. Amen. On Monday most of our children will be returning to school. Let us pray for them that they will settle back into education. For the teaching staff that they will be given strength and vision in all they do. For parents as they continue to bring up their children within the current limitations of normal life. We also remember before God, those in government and national leadership, that they will be guided by your hand in the decisions they take. Thank you that schools are starting again. Amen. Thank you, Thank you that, that schools, schools are starting, starting again. again. Amen. Amen. And finally, we pray for each other, that we be given strength and faith in God to live for Christ each day, that we will show Christ's love and care to all those we know and meet. Not in my strength, but yours, Lord. Amen. Not, Not in, in my, my strength, strength but, but yours, yours, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we join in the family prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Let us say together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. We are quickly coming to the end of our time together this morning, but before we wrap up, here is a quick word from Trevor about the gift of vaccine. Hello again, everyone. I just want to say a really big thank you to your generosity in supporting the Gift of Vaccine campaign. I'm recording this on Wednesday and we've already more than doubled our target, which was for a £1,000. So thank you very much. It's been fantastic seeing um, so many different people wanting to contribute. You can still go to our Just Giving page for more information. And you can get to that either through the church website, htnailsy.org.uk, or you can search Just Giving and search for Gift of Vaccine UNICEF. And please do pass the link on to family and friends and neighbours and colleagues, because that way uh, UNICEF will get even more urgently needed funds so that that um, COVID-19 vaccination can protect more and more people around the world. Thank you very much. It truly is incredible to see how much we have already raised for the Gift of Vaccine scheme. Uh, and I'm excited to see how much more we're able to do as a church family. I would also just like to say a big uh, kind of congratulations to all the parents that have got children and young people who they've had to be homeschooling during the past couple of months. And uh, the end is in sight. Tomorrow they go back to school. And uh, I'm just amazed by how uh, parents have been able to juggle work, life, homeschool balance. Um, and yeah, I'm just amazed by you. And I'm so happy for you that uh, that one thing comes off your plate so you can juggle all the rest that you have to do. And, and now that does bring us to the end of our time together. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you're all staying safe. Um, goodbye and God bless. When my hope and strength is gone, you're the one who calls me on. You are the life, you are the fight that's in my soul.
Yeah.